working on it and i guess everybody has got your own erp next instance so you will be logging in you will be kind of uh, um, entering all the data you will need to enter your own data that also takes time you will need to enter your own data uh, you will need to see how the financial statements look like and to ensure that you know things are uh, properly there so and invariably you may make some mistakes invariably you may um, uh, tag, you know encounter some challenges and all that so we'll we'll use this ten sessions to look at those we'll see how the progress is being made uh, i would request you to also spend <coughs> some time be, beyond the session so it's not one and a half hour sessions and you are done you will need to spend uh, one one and a half hours every day so you attend the session tomorrow we don't have a session so tomorrow you'll spend one and a half hour uh, to kind of revise and look into what you are doing uh, and do so it will be not be just something that you do only in the session you need to do some work outside the session so you need to work on it and <clears throat> i would also urge you to uh, you know who are people attending the session and you are also on whatsapp group so if you get into uh, trouble you can put an sos help is needed on the whatsapp group and i would expect one of you other some other of you kind of respond to it saying okay let me help you uh, <clears throat> and if you think that you know this help could come from people who uh, know about erp next already uh, i let me tell you it's not going to happen mostly it will be like this that oh you know what i also faced the same problem yesterday and you know i can help you now because i know it it happened with me so i can help you better so that's how uh, i'm sure you will learn you will make mistakes uh, you'll correct those mistakes you'll help others correct their mistakes and so on and that is how we will learn Okay, so it's not going to be a typical uh, traditional training session where somebody comes and talks and talks and talks, <clears throat> and you just hear and hear and hear. This is where you're going to work. Uh, you're going to help yourself. You're going to help others, and that is we are going to help everyone to learn, including you. Okay, so that is how we are going to do this uh, kind of a sessions. Maybe a little unusual. I know when I do these sessions, people are a little uh, uh, apprehensive, saying that, "Oh my goodness, this is." Seems different, but it will be interesting. I, I, I assure you that it will be interesting. Yeah. So uh, please feel uh, feel free to ask questions. Please feel free to ask for help. It is very important that you ask for help because if you are stuck somewhere, please don't hesitate. Uh, put it on the WhatsApp group um, that you need help, and let uh, one of you, some of you, kind of respond to it, saying that okay, we can help you, and that is how we will proceed together. So that is very important. Okay. Uh, before I begin uh, with the PowerPoint slides, any question, comment? <clears throat> okay. So let me just. Um, Gupteshwar, have you shared the uh, URL and the Israeli passport to everyone? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to present. Do you see uh, some slideshow over there? Yes. Okay. I hope you are not hearing too much of background noise because it started raining here. 
But just give me a minute. I will close all the windows. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, I guess uh, I'm just trying to uh, share the screen. Okay, thanks, Ashish. Can you see the slideshow? Yes. Okay. So let us now begin. Uh, so what we are going to do, we are going to look at very essential business concepts. And though we will be looking at sales and uh, purchase uh, and the entire cycle per se. Uh, generally, my observation is that everybody kind of understands sales purchase easily and the process may be new to uh, some of you, but as we do ERP next, we will kind of understand that anyway. So we don't need to really spend time in looking at PowerPoint slides uh, to understand this concept. What people typically have a challenge, as what I observed, is, is to understand some kind of uh, accounting concepts and financial statements per se. So that's the reason I'm going to spend some time and also to give some background about what how the company works and what are the business functions. I'm going to say some slides on that. So we'll have a, like an hour session, so and so. Uh, but I want you to ask questions and actually I'm going to ask questions because mm -hmm. I know some of you already know most of it. So it will be really helpful if you kind of contribute. So please feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. Uh, and you know that way we will uh, kind of go through these slides. So first we'll talk about business functions, then business processes, accounting concepts, and then financial uh, statements. So uh, these are the business functions. Uh, just read uh, the slide and see, you, see if you are kind of making sense, um, these terms, what are the thing, things. So when you say business functions are actually many times in a small companies, these are like departments. 
so you have a sales department you have hr department and you have uh, accounting department or uh, you know so there could be some support functions like administration uh, department and so on so but the, the correct word is basically business functions <clears throat> so let me actually invite you to tell you know what is this function do what the people in that department or in that function do so let me start with hr um, i mean you can raise your hand and then um, that would be helpful uh, so raise your hand if you know what does hr do so any one of you would like to share what does hr do any one of you please raise your hand those who know what does hr do hr is human resources hr and human resources management what do hr uh, people do yeah please raise your hand if you know the answer yes rushikesh yeah they are into uh, recruitment they and uh, mm -hmm. they uh, uh, manage the attendance Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, they even uh, manage the salary. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so they recruit, they do the live and attendance uh, of employees. Yeah. Fair enough. They also organize training. So yeah. That's another thing. Yes. Good. Good. uh fair so that's thanks rishikesh now you can lower your hand yeah thank you so let us yeah so let us move on to the next one uh, let us pick up um, sales what do sales people do just raise your hand and answer what do sales people do please raise your hand and tell uh they understand yes, the they uh, yeah sorry they understand the requirement yeah. from the clients and uh, how it uh, 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 it serves their purpose uh, with the product current product so these things sales mm -hmm. people do okay very good may i know who was who was speaking i couldn't see the name uh i'm radhika ha ah, ah, thanks sir okay great uh, so yes so radhika thank you so good so we kind of got some understanding about sales too okay any idea what marketing people do anybody what do marketing people do you can guess i mean it's nothing right or wrong this is not an exam uh, this is not an exam so please say what you know and if it turns out to be wrong also that's fine because that how we will kind of learn so please please uh, speak up what do marketing people do uh marketing people simply i think uh, promote their products or advertise their products mm -hmm. so that uh, yeah in the market so that uh, uh, any buyers, they can grab any buyers or uh, simply tell someone to how much their product is uh, useful for the users kind of thing okay very good so advertisement is definitely a important activity that marketing people do very good very good thank you ashish yeah then uh, let us look at accounting what do accounting people do
what do accounting people do हेलो सरश्रद्धा हियर हाय श्रद्धा या है अकाउंटिंग पीपल रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट सो दे कैन हैंडल द टैक्स रिलेटेड टास्क देन दे कैन डू द सुपरवाइजर्स एंड रियूज इंपॉर्टेंट फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्ट सिस्टम Okay, thank you, thank you. Good. Uh, then what do finance people do? They basically, uh, sorry sir, uh, Radhika here. Uh, they basically uh, see the report like uh, uh, what the sales have been happen uh, in the system. uh for an organization or uh, say so they just uh, maintain the trial balance sheet or uh, uh, uh their uh, what what are their expenses and they they just manage their uh, trial balance reports and all okay that is actually what accounting people do actually that's not what finance people do it's more of accounting function to maintain the trial balance and look at the financial statements hello Yes, Andhiru. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, sir. So basically, financial people uh, do the manage the uh, cash flow and front flow uh, in the in the in the business. Yes, yes, that's correct. So they basically looking at how this cash flow will be there and how the funds will flow either in or out. Both they, yes. they will like to control that fund. Very nice. Thank you, Andhiru. Good. Ah, uh, by the way, accounting and finance is something which. Uh, So, invariably goes together so many a times we may not really differentiate because uh, in many companies there could be only one person who does both accounting and finance uh, though uh, or it will be seen like an accounting and finance department is kind of one function most of the time most department most of the time or heading headed by at least one person most of the time but there are some distinct uh, difference between these two there are basically two different disciplines on it so that is how it is even sales and marketing actually people say it's nothing not two different functions there's only one function so people say marketing is a function and sales is just part of marketing so that is another way to look at it many people also call it the business development and say that is both marketing and sales so these are nothing like i mean in real life you will see different uh, interpretation of these things so that's that's when i say there's nothing right or wrong in this process this is this how you see it so you may see uh, finance and accounting together and see that's one thing so it is definitely two different things but uh, you may have some different understanding which is fine and this is the forum where you can actually clarify if you have some different understanding of it okay what is meant by operations anybody knows what is operations have you heard this term operations yes vaishali hello is yeah. it audible yes uh, i think operations uh, manages the projects uh, delivery of to customers and planning and implementation these kind of things comes under operations perfect perfect uh, anyone else has some other understanding of operations Anyone else who have any other understanding of operations? The reason I'm asking why, why there's another understanding of operations is because operation is a very industry-specific term. So in software industry, when we say operations, we actually mean delivery, uh, delivery of software services industry particularly. When you say operations, essentially means delivery of software services. So you would have delivery heads, basically our operations head in a way. and that is how we look at operations here if you go to manufacturing industry they would call it as a production department or they would have something like a shop floor but they actually manufacture things so if you go for example tata motors you will see assembly line where the car is getting assembled this is a huge assembly line 
and there is a kind of shop floor where the where you know at the end of the assembly line there is a car kind of comes up that is uh, operations for tata motors or for any car industry or manufacturing company that is operations if you go to a bank uh, the bank the core banking you know taking opening up accounts deposits uh, you know giving loans and all that that is all core banking what you call it, is operations for that industry so operations term will change depending on the industry uh, in, in typically we do deal with manufacturing companies so here it is manufacturing that is what the operation is banking it is banking that is operations uh, in colleges the operations is actually teaching learning so the classes are being conducted teachers teach conduct exams and all that that is operations right so operations would mean different things in different industries per se okay uh, then what is remaining um, information systems i'm sure everybody would know this so what is information systems people do in a company we are not a software company here we are talking about the manufacturing company or a bank or whether it's it department or information system what do these people do what people in that department do please raise your hand and answer What do IT department do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, basically for uh, for example, I'll take an example. In, in an IT uh, information system, uh, people do, they manage uh, whatever the issues they are facing in a system or uh, in, a, uh, we say in a product for executing the process. Maybe an IT person can help in that. <laughs> Perfect. Anyone else? Any other opinion? Very good, Radhika. I thought I will hear a lot of things about IT department. Okay, we'll go ahead with this understanding for the time being. Okay, uh, we have kind of done everything except board of directors. Okay, so we incidentally have three directors in this meeting. But then what do these directors do? I think I should not call upon them to answer. I will call upon others to answer. What do these directors, so board of directors do? And these are board of directors is typically, either it could be board of directors for small companies. In large companies, they are typically called executive management or executive management council. And they will have CEOs, CIOs. CEO is chief executive officer. CIO is chief information officer, which is typically head of IT department. They could be chief marketing officer and they could be chief operations officers. And we call them CXO. X is can take any value. So we call it also executive management council or something like that. Every company will have a different nomenclature. So these are the top guys, basically, top managers. So what do these people do? Any idea? So request to everyone that uh, we know the concept by we know the concepts uh, or terminologies by our own academics, maybe from the previous company, maybe from friends, colleagues. So we know some some or other things. So I request everyone to be interactive and participate. So as you can clearly said, there, there is nothing wrong and right, right or wrong in it. It just you are you are uh, you are putting up your point. So that would be validated, invalidated in this forum, and maybe you got to know something more, uh, and that would be clarified. So I mean, please please participate, make it interactive. This is not a college lecture that we are attending. It would be one way. So it has to be other way around to be make, make it more fruitful and make it more uh, i mean take take more out of it so you have to be, you, you have to participate thank you please thanks uteshwar for saying this because i'm really looking for interaction and i'm not seeing that kind of level of interaction yet 
या हॅलो सर जितेंद्र जेर या जितेंद्र या डायरेक्टर डू सपोर्टिंग द एक्झिक्युटिव्ह अँड देअर टीम मेंटेनिंग कंपनी रिसोर्सेस क्रिएटिंग ऑप्शन पॉलिसीज व्हेरी गुड व्हेरी गुड थँक यू आय थिंक आशिष आशिष ऑल्सो रेज हिज हँड सो आशिष वी डू लाइक टू ऑल्सो शेअर आय थिंक बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स सर जॉईंटली सुपरवाइज द ऍक्टिव्हिटीज ऑफ ऑर्गनायझेशन अँड थिंग्स सर ओके थँक यू या ओके फेअर नो सो लेट अस या yeah sorry so basically director may be uh, responsible for the whole the management we can say uh, the execution mm-hmm. of uh, it infrastructures uh, mm-hmm. they can effectively uh, uh, means uh, delivery of the networks and in the development part also oh, okay thank you oh anyone else okay great so we have got some understanding and as i said there is nothing right or wrong i think we understand because we are working when we are not I, i am teaching so i need to know the complete definitions and all that but as we are working we have developed some understanding what do hr people do many times many people also develop understanding that hr people don't i mean i'm just giving example of hr here anything you can substitute anything there uh, so many people may think hr people don't do anything you know they just sit come and take salaries we are the people who are working but these people don't do anything Uh, kind of a thing since there's only hr person from here i'm used, taking example of hr uh, but i mean because we don't don't know what these people are doing what their responsibilities are and all that so anyway one should understand this if you're working in a company you should know what are the other functions and what do people do but more so for us we are working in erp next where because erp next is a transactional system uh, which will capture all the transactions in all the departments in sales hr you no know, um, accounting and all that and the whole uh, power of erp comes because you know it is across functions so that is where this power of HR, uh, erp next comes in so we need to have some broad understanding of what do what is this functions are and what are the actually included uh, in these functions so let us go through few slides just to kind of confirm or reconfirm our understanding so board of directors as i said uh, is the apex body typically apex executive body in a in any company the topmost people they are typically there to define policies so uh, every company will have some kind of a leave and attendance policies or some kind of uh, um, compensation policies some bonus policies you know different policies are there safety policy uh, you know so all those policies are defined largely defined they are responsible of managers top managers to define this kind of process they are responsible for making these policies which will define how the work should be happening and these are people who make strategic decisions strategic decisions could be something like uh, whether we should launch a new product uh, in a market or uh, whether we should go into a new territory altogether like we are currently doing business in india let us uh, start looking at uh, dubai as another market or start looking at uk as another market you know so these are strategic decisions why they are called strategic decisions because uh, they are expensive uh, decisions it, it requires a lot of energy cost time money to do that and once you do it you know you are not going to kind of reverse it there's no undo out there the impact is pretty much big uh, so it's high impact kind of decisions that they are making so if they make wrong decisions it's a problem for the company and some company actually go bankrupt because of the wrong decisions made uh, by the by this board of directors or by the executive committee so <clears throat> people who are working in that capacity has a lot of responsibility so many times you may not uh, you may wonder what these people are doing sitting the ceos of companies you know uh, what are they doing they just attend meeting after meeting uh, but they have a lot of responsibility because if they make mistakes you know the impact is much higher as compared to others making mistakes so they keep need to keep on reviewing whatever the decision they are making so for example if they make a decision to launch a new product they need to review whether you know what is the impact are we is this product doing good in the market is it not doing good in the market uh, do we need to kind of call off this product or should we invest more in this product and so on i mean there's always uh, these decisions need to be reviewed or make some course correction and all that so that is what board directors do uh, 
their role in ERP Next or any ERP for the matter is not really entering any transactions, uh, but actually looking at the reports. So how do you really know what is happening in the company? So if I'm a CEO of a company, how do I know, you know if the company has 10,000 people, 100,000 people, how do I know what people are doing, what is happening? So the only way actually is speaking, uh, in today's world I'm talking about, is to look at those reports, is to look at those analytics, the charts that you kind of see there. You see a lot of analytics coming in the ERP next. Uh, you see a lot of analytics and reports. And these are the reports that will be used by top management. And many times those of you who work with client would hear these things that this is a report that we need or management needs or this is a kind of analytics that you need. Why do they need? Because when you want to make decisions, very strategic, high impact decisions, you want to ensure that you are making an informed decisions. Please note, nobody knows whether the decision is right or wrong to begin with, right? I mean, why would somebody do a wrong decision to begin with? So uh, the decision turn out to be wrong because if they are made without understanding uh, into context or without having facts and figures. So to make informed decisions, the decisions which have basic uh, you know, information, uh, the board of directors will be using ERP to see the reports, different kind of reports. And many times we need to think through you know, what kind of reports managers would like to see so that they can make decisions. Okay, so the reports are not there just for sake because you know, okay, we have got some data, so let us make some reports. The reports are there because uh, somebody is making decisions by looking at those reports. So if there is a mistake in the reports, you know, the decisions will be wrong and the decisions are wrong, the company is going to suffer, the people in the company are going to suffer, the customers are going to suffer and all that, right? So any quality issue in the report is not a trivial thing. It's something which has a very serious impact on the business. Because somebody there looking at the reports and making decisions for the company. Okay. So that's where the board of directors come in. They use systems more to see the reports, see the analytic charts uh, coming after the ERP. Operations, as I said, are people who are actually delivering. Uh, and that is where you'll see this industry specific part of ERP next. So we may look at manufacturing, uh, if time permits, we look at manufacturing as an example uh, near the end of the training program. But if you look at other like non-profit, for example, as an industry vertical and ERP next for non-profit, their operation would mean raising funds, you know, actually managing projects uh, which are being executed, uh, <coughs> which are supported, uh, donate, you know, for which this donation has been collected. So, you know, organ preparing reports for the donors and so on. So there is a different kind of operations. For education, the operation will be all about uh, delivering uh, teaching. So teaching learning process is all about operations there. So healthcare uh, or hospitals, you know, there's a different kind of operations. So all what you see in hospitals going on, uh, on the hospital floor is basically operations there. So you will see different models or different functionality in ERP next for different industries like healthcare, education, uh, you know, the reason manufacturing, the reason they are there because every industry is different and the operations will be different for this. So when you say industry specific thing, the operations part will change. Okay. Every industry will invariably have accounting, finance, HR and those kind of things. So that, that will not be kind of goes across industries. So there are common functions, uh, but operations will be very specific. In manufacturing model is manufacturing or education or healthcare and so on. So that is what is operation. Basically, it's about creating and delivering the product or service. So in banking, the products are fixed deposit, saving account, loans, and all that. Uh, and they kind of deliver services uh, to customers. Uh, in software development, is all about developing software or maintaining software, supporting software, and so on. For education, it is about uh, teaching, delivering courses, and all that. So it depends on industry to industry. Uh, when I am saying all this, uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand or unmute yourself and speak up. Don't uh, listen like a sermon. Don't listen like I'm just talking and you should not be asking questions. Please ask questions uh, in between. Any doubts that you may have. Marketing is a little uh, complex in a way um, because marketing also has various meanings. People understand marketing differently. Uh, but typically, uh, 
I mean, what the first statement says is basically you what we understand as advertising that you communicate to customers. So you say uh, you don't tell customers that Coke is a or Coke doesn't tell its customer that what you drink is a sugar carbonated sweet water kind of a thing. It's, it's not. It's basically water plus something. They will say it's refreshing, right? Uh, or Pepsi will say it's young something which is great. Or uh, I think which is that uh, this is dar ke aage jeet hai. What is that ad? Which ordering is it? Dar ke aage jeet hai. Continue. Yeah. So they will say that, right? So they will give that kind of communication. So every every uh, company will like to tell about its products and services to its customers and prospective customers, the customers, potential customers, or prospects. So they want to kind of tell, and they need to have that kind of budget program. How do we want to tell? You know, whether they will have TV advertisements, whether they will have uh, on social media, they will market, and so on. So they need to really make those plans, strategies, programs, messages. What will they tell up to their customers then? And this is very important because you don't buy cold drink, cold drink. You know, you buy Coke, you buy Mountain Dew, you buy Sprite, right? And you buy it because you get convinced, or you get. Uh, Convinced by the marketers, saying this is this is what you need essentially, right? So you buy, go and buy a particular bike, motorbike, uh, or a car because you know the marketers are convinced you that this is what you need. So that is very important. This communication is very very important. It also includes uh, market research, you know, because they also need to know what those market want. So many companies also conduct market research. So you may get this surveys uh, sometimes saying that you know we want your opinion. On something, um, and many product companies you'll see in, even in website and all that, uh, you'll hear this thing about uh, you know uh, market research, um, what the market wants. So that is something that is part of marketing, and then uh, product development, new products that you want to develop, uh, that also comes as part of marketing because. Uh, marketing will always look out for saying that how do I raise increase my revenue for the company, and the way to increase revenue of this company is to uh, have new products, and to have a new products, uh, you need to really do some market research. You need to really understand what customers want and accordingly make new product. So Coke, for example, will have uh, Coca Cola will have a Coke as one thing, but it will also come with something like Coke Light, you know, which is sugarless kind of. A, Uh, cold drink, or I think Tata Salt. I mean, as simple as salt, right? Salt is salt. I mean, what is great about salt? But there also you see very kind of variants, right? Product variants, uh, where there is a Tata Salt Light, which is supposed to be low on sodium. You know, so they kind of make new products, going on making new products. Okay. Uh, by the way, have you heard this term product variant in the context of ERP Next? Just raise your hand if you heard seen this term in ERP Next. Raise your hand. Yeah, Rishikesh has seen that. Yes, I heard it in its product or variant model. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. So, uh, these so marketing guys uh, may or may not use uh, ERP next or ERP kind of a product uh, because they may not be doing so much of a transactions person. But if they're getting into this market product development, then yes, they need to worry about product, product variants, and so on. So this is still a little more strategic kind of thinking that we have. And but they will make they will make use of sales reports or sales analytics. Uh, they will also like to see the uh, you know what is happening with customer complaints and those kind of things. Customer service is part of. Uh, Uh, marketing, so they like to understand are there any customer complaints? What is the trend going on? So all this analytics that you see in sales, you know, the the user of all these is marketing guys. Okay, so it's very important that uh, they see this kind of uh, reports because uh, then they can make so any strategies and all that any decision making that happens, right? It happens all based on data, based on these reports and analytics. So from that perspective, they are users of Yeah. Then comes sales, and sometimes sales include customer service. Sometimes customer service belongs to marketing department. Depends on company to company. But basically, sales are the people who bring money in the company, and that's why they are important people. Because uh, 
if you don't have sales people you will not have revenue you will not have any income you will not have salaries and you really not have people working for the company so you can't really have a company you know, because unless uh, you have customers and they are paying customers important uh, they know that the company can survive and grow so uh, sales the people who actually sell products and services to customers and bring in money okay um, and they are bigger user of we are phoenix the entire sales model that we look at you will see majority of this actually data is entered by them they will be creating sales order and, and sales uh, different documents we will see that when we get into that but they are users they are actually entering data and so on so sales people are important users finance uh, as already been said finance is all about controlling the fund inflow and outflow and they would make budgeting budgets they will make budgets and they will have uh, financial investment plans and so on uh erp next has some functionality which can be used by finance people so to, in erp next we have something called cost centers we have something called as budget and all that we may not be covering all that in our session uh, but that's an important uh, functionality and uh, as erp next is growing i mean it is in version 13 now but over a period of time we are seeing more and more functionality is being added uh, which can be used by these finance people so we could do something like a budgeting actual versus budgeted kind of a trends and those kind of things so uh, though we may not see how we are using finance uh, functionality of erp next um it is important functionality finance people are users of uh, erp and they will actually use erp to not only to enter the budgeting budgets but also to track the budget you know whether the budget is being consumed or not properly you know who is doing that they will also put some policies in terms of for example expenses so uh, there are policies about expense reimbursement how much you can claim so if you uh, if you work over the weekend and if you are uh, having lunch or if you are traveling for business uh, if you are traveling for a business uh, purpose then you can claim some expenses right so how much one can claim you know all that uh, and who can approve uh, these claims whether the project manager can approve or director can approve all this is defined by finance people and many a times this finance uh, people whatever they define get uh, you know configured uh, in in erp next so many a times those who uh, deal with clients will actually need to uh, understand you know all these things from finance people so you may interacting with finance people if they will tell this is what uh, the policies that we have what expense reimbursement and so on so uh, those are the again people who are kind of a stakeholder in a Uh, ERP next. Then accounting. Uh, accounting is what we say is the heart of ERP. Okay, and I am using this statement very important because unless accounting is there, you know, I mean, it, in a way, is the heart of uh, company's operation uh, because all that is happening in the company, sales uh, is coming in. You are buying something, you are selling something, uh, you are paying employee salary, you are paying taxes to government, you know. all that transactions that are happening right has implication in accounting everything comes in accounting and that is how uh, people manage so accounting is a critical function in an organization but when it comes to erp this is like a heart of erp right any other model of erp anything is happening will have some implication for the accounting right so accounting becomes a key function within erp and unless you understand accounting you can't really understand erp it is so so important for that perspective so anything that happens in the, any transaction that happens across uh, erp there will be some implication of it in accounting so you need to really understand accounting and accounting is basically tracking everything i mean tax you know paying getting money from the customers paying uh, money to uh, rents you know paying to employees which is payroll basically all that is part of accounting all that is uh, recorded <coughs> and maintained all the information is maintained by accounting uh we are talk about hr i guess hr is something which everybody understand um, hr is a people who recruit 
uh, which are the people who train hr is also responsible for retaining people so only because we hire people doesn't mean they will stay in the company they will stay in the company because the company has a good culture the company has good policies hr policies so it's a responsibility of hr to ensure that people are working for the company for long and you know they are really happy working for the company not only they are working but they are happy working for the company so they will also train people because uh, it's a responsibility of hr to ensure that uh, people are continuously learning and becoming better at their job right so that is job of hr uh, they also have to do some kind of uh, branding in terms of employer branding so how do they attract a good talent that is also responsibility of hr so this is what a typical hr would do uh, <clears throat> it department uh, i guess we already discussed define it requirements what is required by the company by the business uh, deliver those systems and provide ms reports so if you work with a company which is it department and for example you are working and delivering erp next to them their job they may work with you obviously their job is to ensure that we are getting the right requirements the requirements to be in terms of what kind of information required reports and so on <clears throat> it will also be important that we deliver those systems and we support those systems if there are any bugs found we need to fix those bugs and so on so it department is a support department in a company and then there are other support functions uh, like purchase is there which will discuss buying inventory of raw materials so there are the people who buy for the company purchase they are also called procurement uh, then facility management is basically uh, if there is a large company um, and they have buildings and campuses they need to manage that uh, in many places facility management is also called as administration so administration will look after overall facility in terms of you know uh, ensuring everything is maintained and upkeep the legal department would be there which just to ensure that there is any legal issues they need to handle that if a company is a public limited company which has a stock in the market they then they have investor relations department which will communicate with shareholders organize annual general meetings and so on so that is a specific function uh, applicable only for public limited company like large company like lnt would have it the last would have it so and so yeah is this clear to all of you any questions so far uh, whatever i said was it something different than what you understood earlier is it something inconsistent to what you had uh, known earlier in one of the training program um, i was telling what is marketing and one of the participants said thank you sir till now i was thinking marketing is all about going in market and buying things so we call shopping but it used to use the word or the family people used to word marketing so let us do marketing today essentially would mean go to market and buy uh, sabji vegetables and grocery and all that so that was marketing uh, but then you know the term we use marketing in business is much different than what we use in our families so many of these terms may have some different interpretation some different understanding so i just want to ensure that is this consistent whatever you have uh, know so far is there something you want to clarify this is the time to do that Yes. Yes. What is the basic difference between accounting and finance? Yeah. So accounting is all about recording uh, transactions, all accounting transactions, and preparing financial statements. Yeah. Uh, whereas, if you talk about finance, they are responsible for controlling the fund flow. Uh, so, for example, company needs uh, fund for cash flow. So, for example, company needs uh, funds. For uh, um, 
developing new product so that means taking loans from yeah. either a banks or some other uh, institutional investors so finance people will be involved in that accounting people will not be involved in okay. so getting loans or you have surplus money and you want to invest that money in say mutual fund or you know some other okay. things so that investment decisions are also made by the finance people uh if uh, the time is for making salaries and uh, we have not received the customer payment yet so we may need to take some kind of overdraft from a bank temporarily okay. because we need to pay out salary on time that is the decision of a finance manager so that is what they will control the fund flow or the cash flow okay thank you sure. thanks yeah any other doubts Okay, so Ajna said no, so no doubts for now. Okay, now let us understand this term business process. Uh, so we are talking about business functions. So business process, on the other hand, is a kind of a step. So just to put a simple statement, business process are basically a kind of a different steps, a kind of a procedure that we are following. Uh, so let me take an example uh, of a business process. i think that will make it easier uh, just give me a minute uh, to share another okay, let me just open a particular uh, diagram a slide and that will explain uh, what is a business process by the way before even i show that uh, any one of you what, what do you understand by business process any one of you what do you mean by, what do you understand by the term have you heard this term business process is it are you hearing for first time or have you heard it before if you heard it what do you understand by the term business process Okay, so this is an example of uh, business process, which basically talks about three different business functions: sales, accounting, and manufacturing production. So, what you see on the left hand side, do you see the screen? Just want to confirm whether you see the slide. Please say yes if you see the slide. Yes, sir. Yes. so uh, we have this sales function accounting function and manufacturing function manufacturing production manufacture or production or operations essentially okay. so in sales they will generate order they get kind of order from the customer uh, and they submit the order <clears throat> that is what the sales guy would do okay and then it will go to accounting what accounting people will do uh, in this particular company <clears throat> they will first check the credit like you got a order for uh, so let us say you make uh, uh, furniture for company for you know for your clients so you got an order to make 
hundred chairs. Okay. So you will first check whether this company uh, where from where got order has uh, enough credit. I mean, are they reputed company uh, from where your order has come, or if there are existing client, what is their history? Do they pay on time? Do they have enough, uh, or are they supposed to pay before or they, for their earlier order? So they will check credit basically. And if the credit is okay, then they will tell <coughs> production department to go ahead and make the product. So they assemble the product. They will actually make that kind of chairs, uh, and then they will ship the product. And the parallelly, the accounting people will generate invoice. Uh, they will generate invoice uh, for uh, uh, for the sales guys to kind of go and collect money. So the logistic department or the operations guys will actually ship the product to the to the client, and the sales guys uh, this generally the invoice also sent along with uh, the delivery. So whenever somebody accepts delivery, they also get an invoice. Invoice is some like a bill, so they get a bill, and then the, they have to pay. So obviously, <clears throat> no client at least in India <clears throat> pays bill just like that. So you need sales people to follow up with them and ensure that the payment is received. So what is not <coughs> Shown in here is that <coughs> you get this bill. Uh, the sorry, um, the clients get this bill. The salespeople will follow up with that client, get the payment, and the payment will come again. Accounting guys will record that payment within <coughs> the system, and then the process is over. <coughs> so this is called order to cash process. Okay, and let me tell you this is a simplistic, simplistic. Uh, depiction or presentation of what happens in this process uh, if you look at uh, say lnt um, you know which, which gets orders to uh, construct uh, a commercial complex or a manufacturing plant you know and they get cash at the end of uh, that project uh, they also have cash uh, uh, order to cash process which is obviously much more complex than what you can see or what you can even show uh, on a on a slide, okay. Uh, Indeed, trans company also gets an order and gets a payment from the customer. So there is also a cash to uh, order to cash process. So that uh, is also a process. And again, there are multiple people involved there. Instead of a manufacturing production, there it will be uh, people projects, people who are delivering, developing thing. And obviously, in that also, you will have people who are um, you know programmers and testers and QA. Quality assurance people, business analyst, project managers, and all kind of people. So operations actually could be a very big thing out there. So there could be many things happening there. So a process could be very very complex, um, and or it could be very simple depending on the company. The company is a small. It could be simple process. Okay, but there are many things happening across business functions. And what is happening in ERP is that in ERP actually we uh, see all these transactions happening. So a transaction, uh, so somebody enters a sales order um, in ERP uh, and then you know that against that sales order things are keep on happening there, right? Somebody checking credit, somebody is generating invoice, uh, uh, you know, work is happening. So some tasks are in projects are happening which will be associated with that sales order. Uh, some completion tracking could be done is that you know 80% of the product is done, 20% is remaining sort of it. But then the you know the invoice is sent and then ultimately the payment is received and so on. So a lot of things are happening and this is all happening in ERP. So at any point of time, you know what is happening with that sales order. Okay. So even the people you know the people uh, working in the company is twenty or twenty uh, or two thousand or twenty thousand or two lakhs. You know, if you have a good ERP in place, you will actually know what is happening inside how this process is executed. Okay. If it is stuck somewhere, for example, if the check credit is stuck, because of that, you can't really produce something. You will get to know in ERP that it is stuck over there. All right. So uh, ERP is a why ERP is used in the company is simply because different business functions people are working in their specialized work. Right. Sales people are going ahead, chasing customers, uh, getting orders. Accounting people are generating invoices. Right, keep on generating invoices. Production people are keep on uh, producing services or producing products and so on. But all this information is going in ERP. So anybody, particularly the top management, looking into ERP, will get 
a kind of a virtual stance of what is happening uh, in the physical world. So we call it a digital twin. That means what was happening in real life, you know, uh, there is something you see that there in the digital world in the year. So if the company has recently bought uh, maybe hundred uh, tons of raw material, you know, that is there in the inventory. You can see that physically go there and see that. You can also see that inventory in your computer in the ERP system that yes, there is a hundred tons of inventory. You also know what this hundred tons have, the water, from where they have bought in, what have you paid for it or not, you know. All that information is available in here. So from that perspective, ERP becomes a very powerful uh, software and very essential software for companies to operate. Right? Particularly when companies are growing, uh, not every now and then you can't go and watch. So if you're running a small shop, uh, kind of a shop where you have all the products that you're selling in front of your eyes and you're kind of selling them, uh, then you really don't need ERP because you see all the products out there. But if you're running a retail chain, you know, you have 100 stores and you have products not only in the stores, but also in the warehouse somewhere outside the stores. And you're shipping products from warehouse to the stores and all that. You really can't go and check everything, inspect, inspect everything physically. You need to either to have that information in the system and then only you can see, it's a digital twin. You can see that what is happening uh, in physical world. And that is where ERP becomes important and necessary for running large, small and large business, a growing business. I would say any growing business uh, or large business could need ERP. And even for small businesses, if people are like, you know, five people, 10 people, 20 people company, 50 people company will need ERP. If it's a single person company, may not require ERP. But if it's five, 10, 20 people company, yes, they would require ERP. Yeah. So we'll be getting into ERP next, uh, and we still have to finish accounting concept. So though I said that today only I'll show you slides, uh, tomorrow morning also, uh, not tomorrow, day after Wednesday, I'll show you some slides of accounting, and then we'll start with uh, ERP next. Meanwhile, please go on, log in to your instance, see everything is working fine there, check it up, uh, because we'll start working on ERP next on Wednesday. So please check whether your login is working, you know, all the information is there, any issues with it, please check that before you come for the next session. And as I said, please create a WhatsApp group. So last two minutes, open for questions. Okay, so this was like a warm-up session, the first session. Uh, I guess you might have figured out uh, by now that uh, I will be having a lot of silence in between to ask you questions. I'll keep on asking that please ask questions. So I wanted to be more interactive going forward. So uh, please. Uh, you can't, I have one uh, from question. Going, yes. Uh, normally you have shown the chart saying that example business process where the sales, accounting and manufacturing goes in a certain hmm. pattern but in practical hmm. business sometimes the sequence is very disturbing so sales happens and directly it goes for manufacturing without consulting with an accounting or anywhere hmm. because uh, the limits and everything the credits are normally uh, uh, known to the sales department so sales department takes hmm. the call accept the order and they directly is pass on to manufacturing or it's uh, shown to the production planning basically so hmm. sometime it's going to be in the, the accounting system is not going to be center of the art of the organization in terms of the processes the way you have shown it it's going to be disturbed in nature and that might be in challenging 
to put it in the ERB format, basically. Hmm. So, uh, so, that's, so yeah. uh, this may not be in reality. Also, we have to be that we have to cross check all the time the business processes wherever we are trying to understand and implement the ERP. Uh, yes. So this is an example. Yeah. This process just, obviously not every year the same thing will apply. And yes, yes. No, and uh, thanks for saying this because otherwise people may carry impression that you know this is the way. The business conducted. No, thanks for clarifying. So uh, this is just an example. In real life, it could be different. So every business will have its own process of how it should be done. Uh, sometimes it's documented. Sometimes it is not documented. Sometimes uh, it is documented but not followed. That, for example, it may be said that uh, uh, credit has to be checked, but not really checked. They just go ahead and start producing. So that could also happen. But the challenge of uh, implementing ERP um, is that whether you document or not document, you need to configure your system. And you may put some enforcement kind of a thing that you could do. And I'm just exceeding time, but let, let us complete that point. Uh, uh, for example, uh, whenever uh, sales guys will give a quotation, they give a quotation to a, um, to a company and say, this is what uh, you know, we will be uh, giving you some kind of quotation. And then um, client will obviously do some bargaining and then they will revise the quotation. They'll give a separate quotation. Uh, and then the quotation is given. And then the sales order is made based on, you know, what internal. Or, or the sales order is given by the customer, given to the uh, company. Now, invariably, in many companies, it happens that even the quotation is raised, let us say, for 100 rupees. Uh, the order is received for 90 minutes, okay. which is fine. It may happen on the phone and just do it. You know, just uh, don't worry too much about it. And just go and go ahead and do it. So you could have ERP system which will allow that, which will not really bother. Fair enough. Your quotation was 100 rupees. Your, the corresponding uh, sales order is for 190 rupees, which is fine. But you may actually uh, enforce, put a rule saying that your quotation and your uh, sales order can't have a different values. So if you quotation 100 rupees, your sales order has to be 100 rupees. If it is not, it will not post it further. You can't really uh, generate any work order for production department. It has to be same. Or uh, the difference should not be more than 10%, something like that. You could put that kind of a rule. Uh, the challenge that happens is if there's, a, if there's no system, uh, and if there's a rule like that, people can simply bypass because there is nobody to enforce it. There is nobody to check uh, kind of a thing that you know, this rule has to be there. But when you have ERP system in place, you know, things will simply not move ahead. I mean, you can simply physically word, you may actually go ahead and start producing something. But in the digital world, in the system, it is not there. And that is where you will have all kinds of problems in terms of uh, you know having a system. Uh, because the system will not show exactly what is happening. In the and that is actually a failure. So uh, in ERP, when we are doing configuration, uh, we are actually hard coding this process, whatever the process that we are talking about, uh, in the system. And we'll be putting some validation rules and all that. If they are the ones which are followed, great, it works smoothly. But if it's not followed, it will have its own challenges. So whenever we are putting implementing ERP next or ERP system, we need to really configure ERP to suit the organization, how they want this process to happen. So in the example that we are doing to the, uh, or the story that we are going to follow, we are going to follow a very simplistic process. We are not going to put many validation rules and those kind of things. Uh, but in real life, you would have such kind of rules or you may not have it. So the process will be different for different people. And it could also evolve over a period of time. So initially, people may do it uh, very informally, but as company grows, you want to make it more formal, more rule-based, and so on. So that will keep on happening. Yeah. So thanks, Jen, for uh, asking these questions and giving me a opportunity to clarify. That this is just an example, and the real life could be different, and real life may have more challenges than what we could uh, learn in this training session. The real life is obviously going to be more complex. But we'll try to understand, try to learn how things really work.
yes uh, any more questions we are done in a way so if you have any question you can stay back and ask questions i will be here for next 5 10 minutes but otherwise we are done so those who have some other engagement uh, would exit now we are kind of done but it's just like in a physical class when the when the speaker kind of done some students stay back and ask questions so you can stay back in the class session um, and ask questions but other, otherwise we are done we can um, those who need to go for other meetings or work can we can leave now but those who have asked questions can ask questions uh, i'll also stop recording so we are done so we'll stop recording